Capstone on lobbying and just how it works and how it's really influencing Congress and what they do yeah. uh, in Washington. And so lobbying, uh, I've got the definition up there. Basically, it's just a way to kind of get the ideas to the politicians and really on um, specific ideas. Like there's <clears throat> uh, hundreds of different lobbying groups that just focus on uh, really specific ideas like pharmaceutical companies or maybe the government itself, like the Chamber of Commerce, um, and just really, really any facet of American like corporations and companies. And But uh, recently, they've been spending more and more money, and that's supposed to be a billion. Uh, they've really spent more and more money over the years. 3.3 billion. Is yeah. What spent. Over the last decade, that's really the average. It's kind of hovered around 10.5 okay. over the last five, too. And uh, basically, <clears throat> it's, it's pretty much essential in any democracy that you need just to kind of make it more efficient because the politicians can't sit around and research all the different topics and problems that the American people have. So really lobbying was made to kind of make it more efficient and streamline that process of information given to the politicians. But recently it's it's uh, taken on a different shape where instead of the information being pertinent, it's more about the money and how much money is given to said politicians. Yeah, what's up? Can you explain that political cartoon to so us? So here we have um, a congressman uh, saying, nobody tells me what to do or say, but if you can make that out, the, mm -hmm. the pencil says lobbyists. And so basically it's trying to emphasize that Congressmen are always trying to put on a face of independence when actually they're they're kind of pulled in a in a million different ways by mm -hmm. their whole campaign to reelect, which is kind of what's mm -hmm. which is what I'm going to get into now. Uh, basically, lobbying has just exploded. Where in history you can see, like in the 50s, there was almost no lobbying, and what a lot of cor corporations are actually trying to do is distance themselves from government, which is where you know Roosevelt got in and broke up all the monopolies and set up all the regulations. And but recently, the trend is for companies to use the government in a way that helps them and benefits them. And again, another weird cartoon, kind of disturbing this one. Um, so basically the lobbyists flood billions of dollars and into Capitol Hill, paying their lobbyists is mostly what they're doing, but also a big thing is campaign donations, because a lot of times what kind of persuades congress, congressmen nowadays is just to get reelected and reelected, and uh, with the flooding of campaign costs, lobbyists are a really kind of easy way to get that money by just saying that they'll, they'll help them out with a bailout or a new law that will uh, yeah, help their company. And here are just some numbers. <clears throat> like these are the, uh, the total spent and it also has the amount of lobbyists that uh, is in Capitol Hill right now. And you can see already in 2017, the site Open Secrets is already cataloging it, and it's already almost at a billion for uh, expenditures. I don't know why they're like reversed, but yeah, they're uh, they're kind of starting to dip again because Obama was really hard on, and he tried to put in new regulations, but it uh, it's probably going to go up again because Trump's probably going to get rid of a lot of them. Uh, this is uh, Washington's part. So basically, a big question is how, why are politicians just letting this happen? And you know, you see someone from, like the, that senator from Georgia, who says he's going to make a big difference and stand up to congressmen. But a lot of times they get to D.C. and uh, just the massive amount of money that's floating around and that the lobbyists have on a whim kind of turns them. And a big tactic that I actually read about that's uh, used a lot is um, Lobbyists are often just politicians that have kind of made it out of D.C. and are now working their way over to Wall Street. And a lot of times what the companies will do is say, we can hire you after you're done with your campaign. And 
you can make a lot of money for us if you kind of play for us here. So it's almost like they're putting them on their payroll before they even hire them. Yeah. So this is probably the, the biggest lobbying company that everybody's heard about, which is uh, Big Pharma, which is usually uh, not a good term when you see it. It's usually shrouded in darkness. But uh, they've been in the news recently because of a lot of really just doing whatever they want and running rampant. Uh, like, I don't know if you've heard of Martin Shkreli, Shkreli, Martin Shkreli. Uh, he's a, a big, he's actually like borderline famous, and all he does is he's a CEO of a pharmaceutical company <clears throat> that recently got in trouble, well not in any legal trouble, but just tabloid trouble for increasing uh, one of their cancer treatments by like a 5,000% in price and basically just for no reason and uh, for like decades before that it was cheap and subsidized but just kind of because he can he uh, increased it immensely and um, <clears throat> a lot of now the what you're hearing is uh, about this opioid crisis which is heroin but also a lot of prescription drugs are now being used like Vicodin and fentanyl and um, all of those stem again from the pharmaceutical companies which have really tried immensely to keep that going to the American people by lobbying and trying to stop any sort of law reform that will like attack the distributing and <clears throat> the way that it gets to the people. So yeah, they're the biggest one. They spend like a billion, like a third of all the lobby every year. <clears throat> so basically what I learned is that lobbying is an essential piece of democracy. You can't really have a functioning Congress and Republic without it because otherwise our politicians would just be overwhelmed and um, <clears throat> not have the pertinent information that they need. But recently it's just kind of gotten out of hand with the amount of money and the way that it's kind of viewed, which is the big players get to pay in and wow, like the American Civil Liberty Union might be sitting by the side because they don't have enough money, they're publicly funded, or, or NPR, you know, anything that just doesn't have enough money to play with like a, a GE or a pharmaceutical company. That's, that's it. Yeah. I, um, this is fascinating. I'm sure you can go into so much more detail about this. Um, do you see any reform? I know you say it's essential. I wonder if there's like any reform, or have you come across any reading or anything, a reform that eliminates it, or? Um, the or biggest thing that I think I've been reading of, of a lot of people that um, the biggest idea is just kind of a cap to okay. try and suppress the amount of money that's flooding in, like maybe like half a million or a million maybe dollars. Even the playing field. Slowly? Yeah, to try and try and okay. even it more to where to where, yeah, the little guys can uh, finally get a say. But um, Obama, in like his last two years, put in regulations where, um, lobbying regulations, I don't know the specifics of it, but I think actually they've already been rolled back because it was an executive order. Okay. Um, and you were talking about, and of course, I want you guys to ask questions too. Of course, um, you're saying it would overwhelm the, the Congress, and I, I in my mind, I'm like, okay, perfect world. I wonder if there could be like a staff just to know everything that's going on there. If that something that even could come within the scope mm -hmm. of the staff of the congressman. Yeah, you know, that's that's a good. Uh, more people that are closer to the co congressman. Because a lot of times, yeah. what it is is these lobbyists that are working for the corporations, not for the county. Yeah. And um, I think that that could be definitely a, a good idea. But the thing is. It's kind of like a never-ending cycle yeah. with just the stranglehold on politicians. Yeah, absolutely. Where no change ever happens because yeah. new reforms. Well, why would they want to change it if they're getting money? Yeah, they're getting a lot of money yeah. from it. In uh, one of my recently, actually, there was a a whirlpool um, buyout or a bailout where they made like. Five hundred million dollars because they were working with the government. So it's it's definitely working for the corporations, but for us, not so much. Yeah. Do you guys have questions for Felix? So if you 
So if you support the law that will forward my business, then I'll give to some kind of super PAC that will support your campaign? Yeah, that's a lot of it. Because uh, really the big thing nowadays is to try and get reelected. The whole, you know, doing greater good and change is kind of out the window with partisan politics. And it's kind yeah. of more of a, just so we sad. want to get back. Yeah. But we are always putting our money where our beliefs are. I guess it's just on a larger, more corrupt scale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. It'd be interesting to follow. Interesting to see, especially in this change of presidency, and you, and you showed that with the money, that the money went down in the last few years of Obama. Obama. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, what's going to happen? If it changes it's, in It's college. almost at a billion already. I mean, yeah. We're like... Where some of those restrictions are listed, lifted. Yeah. Has he talked at all about lifting some of those campaign donations? I wonder what his interest now would be. Yeah. I mean, because, and he's an interesting one too because it's not like he needed the funding for his political campaign. He was his own funding. Um, that's interesting. I'm fascinated by this topic. I want to know more. <laughs> I'm sorry that you we didn't have a larger crowd for you. No, that's I'm sorry that I just we messed it up work. really. We made it work. Mixed it up. And yeah, thank you for letting me. Yes, just... I'm gonna give you a hand because we did. Yeah. Fighting some kind of, he got some antibiotics today. I can hear it, yeah. <laughs> got some.